reason to be bullish. Batteries, battery costs. What you've got here is the experience curve, the same process that resulted in two cent power from solar is happening in batteries. We've already seen, to start over on the left, you'll see 2010 to today, 75% reduction in the cost of electric vehicle batteries. What we're going to see between now and 2030 is another 70% reduction in the cost of electric vehicle batteries. One of the big barriers to adoption, the cost of electric vehicles, is going away. Right now, today, we're at the point where on a total cost of ownership basis, most people should probably already switch to an electric car. If you drive uh, very short distances in the year, you don't use the car much, forget it. If you drive very long distances in one day, 300 miles, 500 miles, forget it. But for most people, they don't do that. So that's the total cost of ownership. But you know what? Most people buy on the sticker price. They look at a car, they look at another car, that one's cheaper, that one's more expensive, they make a choice. But by about 2025, sticker price will be lower for electric vehicles. Sticker price. Of course, fuel will be much cheaper. A quarter. Electricity is much cheaper on an energy basis, much more efficient vehicles and so on. Maintenance will be cheaper as well. These are very simple machines. They're very simple machines. You don't have many moving parts. You've got the motors, you've got suspension system, you know, steering, windscreen wipers, you know, maintenance. What do you do? Fill up the windscreen wipers, rotate the tires, you're done. By the way, think about the implications for labor, uh, uh, jobs, and so on. That's a separate discussion. But these cars are going to get cheaper and better, better acceleration, quieter, charge them at home, never go to a petrol station again, very convenient. By 2025, this is going to be game over. Now, let's talk about those batteries. The battery is going to get cheap, the car is going to get cheap, and this is where batteries are going to be. If you look at, this is the growth of lithium ion batteries uh, between now and 2030. And if your hope is to use batteries to stabilize the grid, the grid-connected batteries, stationary batteries, are going to provide about seven and a half minutes of supply for the world's electricity. Right? Vehicles will supply three hours. This is to re-emphasize the importance of the batteries. Vehicles will drive the battery costs down but the benefits will be split between mobility and the grid. Another reason why we're bullish, of course, it's all these are self-reinforcing trends, but another reason is the launch of models. The car companies have woken up to the fact that this is an inevitable development, inevitable for the reasons we've talked about. And so now we see this amazing proliferation of models. In 2008, if you wanted to buy an electric vehicle, you actually had a choice, not of one, but of two. One was the Tesla Roadster, the other was a golf buggy. 2009, 2010, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, This is not a complete representation. This doesn't include cars available in China only or India only. And there's been so many launches, we haven't kept up. We can't do the graphic cutouts fast enough anymore. And what you see on the left is different sorts of cars. Sports cars, sedans, uh, trucks, uh, SUVs, etc., etc. And on the horizontal scale, you see range. So, to Nikki's point, that not having to do a car swap, it's kind of useful if you want to you know, use the car in everyday life, you don't get sort of pit stop support that they get in Formula E. But the range is going up, the different models, the car companies fully on board. And it's not just cars. Here you've got commercial vehicles. That's actually uh, the very heavy trucks at the top, light trucks at the bottom, and range. If anybody says that, oh, this is fine, but it won't work for heavy trucks, they are wrong. 
Weight is not the issue. Range is the issue. The economics that allow you to have a Tesla do 300 miles will allow you to have a truck that does 300 miles. In fact, weight as an electrical system, batteries as a proportion of vehicle weight goes down as you get heavier vehicle, not up. Weight is not an issue. Range is the issue. And then buses. A complete range of different buses. Transport for London, we're very proud because we have 120 electric buses out of a fleet of 9,300 or something like that. Uh, Shenzhen, 17,000 buses, every single one electric. There you can see Chinese electric bus sales. I was in Turkey re uh, recently. Three manufacturers of electric buses in Turkey. This is a global trend. All urban buses will go electric. Very pleased to see this. Ecobus. It's out there in the hall, for those of you who have not seen it. Designed in the Emirates, manufactured in the Emirates. These are relatively simple vehicles. And so we see, even here, this development. Now, are there caveats? Yes, of course, you know, Elon Musk, that's what he's promised to manufacture in purple, what he's actually manufactured in blue, uh, we all know, but our forecasts don't depend on uh, Elon Musk hitting his forecast, they're actually heavily uh, discounted. EV charging points, yes, we need to build a lot. It's electrical engineering, we've done a lot of it over 150 years. Charging, infrastructure, soluble problem, no question. Lithium. Oh dear, the lithium price is spiking on the right, cobalt price is spiking on the left. Let me show you what happened to silicon when solar took off. There you have it. You got a price spike from $20 uh, per pound, and then it went to $400, and then it went back down again. These are not rare materials. The price spike is the signal for investors, the investors pile in, the price comes back down. I guarantee it will be the same. You might have a few years of higher prices. It's going to perhaps delay the battery price drops for a few years by a few percent, but we'll end up with cheap raw materials in those batteries. Hydrogen on the left, hydrogen sales. That's on the left, battery on the right, hydrogen. Will we do hydrogen? No. Because if you've got electricity and you want to drive somewhere, you put it in a battery and you drive. You don't convert that electricity into hydrogen and then back from hydrogen and waste half of the electricity. That's a stupid thing to do. And then technology. Look at the sorts of developments that we're also reading about and we're starting to see. The background to all of this, these are better vehicles for the electric for the digitization trend is it real yes these services google maps waze city mapper they have transformed the way we travel around our cities already this is already happening ride hailing enormous increase in the use of personal transportation in cities not replacing taxis adding to taxis already happening the electric vehicle is a better platform for these sorts of services. Financial integration. We're seeing blockchain applications in shipping, trucking, supply chains, uh, uh, dealing with customs. These trends are, are all self-reinforcing.